come back after the short break. So, before the break we are talking about uh, the um, uh, location of the pole of the feedback system and as you can see here uh, the condition and uh, in fact, uh, I should have taken this P 2 even uh, even beyond uh, this location of P 1 dash uh, for a uh, clearer picture. So, if I consider say P 2 it is even beyond this point something like this and then if it is having P 2. Okay. So, if I consider this is the P 2 then uh, the corresponding phase it could have been like this for for A and uh, then um, uh, P 2 dash on the other hand uh, it is instead of here this is P 2 dash and uh, which is same as P 2 and then uh, this blue line the phase here for um, for A f and you can you can say that the phase it is having very clean step like this one. Now, if this P 2 it is in the near vicinity of P 1 dash then what will happen that is what we need to investigate in our next discussion and we consider that case it is case 2 B. Uh, there uh, also we consider two poles uh, uh, for A, but uh, the conditions uh, the condition is different. So, uh, let me clear the board and let me go to that case. Yeah. So, here we do have uh, that situation. Uh, so, first of all uh, forward amplifier it is having um, two poles P 1 and P 2 beta is independent of frequency and um, the system of course, it is negative feedback system and uh, we consider uh, P 1 it is a lower frequency than P 2, uh, which means that P 1 is referred as dominant pole, but um, the, the anticipated shifted version of this P 1 namely P 1 dash if it is comparable with P 2 then what happens. So, uh, if I again if I come back to uh, the feedback system gain A f which is having an expression of A divided by 1 plus beta into A and uh, then we obtain this expression. Now, while we will be doing the approximation of this equation we can consider this case and we may say that uh, instead of really considering um, considering this part let we completely ignore this part to have a meaningful conclusion. So, what we are doing is we are retaining this part and we are keeping this part here, but this part since it is very small compared to this one we may uh, drop this part. So, with this approximation what we are getting here it is uh, we do have uh, only these three terms and this is of course, valid because uh, as I said that P 2 it is much higher than P 1. So, if I multiply uh, both uh, this pole by 1 plus beta into A naught uh, then this condition uh, remains same which means that this part it is very uh, very uh, very 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 uh, large compared to this part and the reciprocal wise if I see then I can say this is dominant term compared to this one and hence we can do this approximation we can eliminate this part or we can drop this part. Now, after dropping this part what do we have? We do have of course, the second order equation and from this second order equation uh, if I see that uh, uh, these two are comparable then factorization of this uh, equation may or may not be uh, having meaningful factorization or rather uh, I should say that we can do factorization, but uh, while we will be doing the factorization the coefficient need not be real. Forget about the integer, but uh, the coefficient uh, what will what we will be getting 
it may not be real rather it may uh, be uh, even complex. So, depending on the coefficient of a square here and s uh, and their relative value, we may get expression of uh, the, uh, uh, the poles, uh, it will be complex. So, in the next slide we can do uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know derivation of the location of the pole. So, uh, if you yeah, so here we do have the the expression of a f, uh, it is having um, in the numerator we do have a naught f and a naught f it is defined here a naught divided by 1 plus beta into a naught. And then this part if you see based on this coefficient uh, we can write in this form. However, this p 1 dash and p 2 dash they are uh, they need not be a real number. In fact, if you um, consider this second order equation and then if you write the corresponding roots, what you will be finding is that um, uh, the roots are or the location of the pole p 1 dash and p 2 dash it is 1 by 2 um, uh, multiplied by p 2 minus square root of p 2 square minus 4 p 1 into p 2 multiplied by 1 plus beta into a naught. So, this is one possible root. The other one it is same uh, except this sign instead of minus it will be plus. So, we can say that now based on the relative value of this p 2 um, p 2 square and um, 4 p 1 p 2 multiplied by 1 plus beta into a. So, based on their relative value uh, you, you may get this part either real or it may be uh, imaginary depending on uh, the, the relative value of the positive part and negative part. So, if I say that if p 2 it is higher than 4 times p 1 1 plus beta into a naught then we can get uh, this part it is real. On the other hand if it is uh, less then this part it will be imaginary and then what we will be getting is that both p 1 and p 2 they are complex and incidentally they are complex conjugate also. So, the real part it will be uh, p 2 by 2 in that case and then imaginary part it is plus minus. In fact, for p 1 and p 2 we do have plus and minus and then uh, the imaginary part then we have to find what will be the value here. So, uh, this condition it is finally, telling us that whether these two poles they are really real poles uh, remaining as real pole or they are becoming complex conjugate. So, uh, depending on uh, this uh, value uh, as I said that uh, the uh, location of the pole of uh, a f it will be different. So, uh, the corresponding Bode plot if you try to sketch uh, what we will be getting here it is uh, yeah yeah. So, I uh, let me try to sketch the Bode plot of uh, a a f and maybe the loop gain also. So, um, let me start with a. So, uh, if I consider this a in d b and then if we plot against omega, uh, omega in log scale again. So, what we are expecting here it is we do have a pole here uh, p 1 and then we do have the second pole here maybe in the near vicinity of the anticipated uh, pole uh, p 1 dashed which is p 1 multiplied by 1 plus beta into a naught. So, this is a this is in d b scale and um, then beta we do have um, I should not say beta rather loop gain 
minus of loop gain. So, we do have loop gain it is having the same poles namely P 1 and P 2 same as A. So, this is gain plot of the loop gain and then uh, we do have the um, A f. So, A f it is above 0 d b So, what we are expecting here it is it is remaining there to uh, the value here or rather if I convert this into d b. So, that will be the level here for a f in the low frequency region and then it is um, uh, it is expected to be hitting this a and we are expecting that there will be a sharp corner. Why is it sharp? Because um, it is from the flat line it is getting converted into minus 40 d b per decade. So, as if it is having two uh, combined poles are there. In fact, this pole they are not really uh, they are real and in fact, they are imaginary. As a result in the Bode plot because of the imaginary uh, or rather I should not say imaginary it is complex pole rather complex conjugate pole and because of the complex conjugate pole in the gain uh, what you can see here it is um, it will be having a kind of overshoot kink kind of things. So, uh, strictly speaking this A f it will be having a kink. Now, uh, uh, so the overshoot of this kink uh, it is directly proportional or rather directly depends on the magnitude of the, the imaginary part here and the real part here. So, uh, if the imaginary part it is uh, getting higher and higher. So, then we are expecting this will be having higher uh, kink. Uh, on the other hand if these two poles are uh, distinct pole of course, then uh, or rather if these two poles are uh, real poles namely uh, whatever we see here if it is um, uh, also a real entity or uh, if P 2 square it is higher than the remaining part here. Then of course, this um, P 1 dash and P 2 dash they will be distinct real poles and in that case this overshoot it will not be there. Now, uh, if I consider the corresponding phase um, probably we can try to go to the phase plot also. Yeah. So, we can try to make a phase plot here. Uh, I am just retaining the gain plot so that I do not have to redraw it. And, um, so, the phase plot for A ok. So, phase plot of A it is having a step here and then it is having another step here like this. But if I consider, so this is the phase plot of A. And now, if I consider phase plot of A f, uh, it is remaining here and then all of a sudden it will get a sharp, sharp change of the phase starting from 0 degree to minus 180 degree. So, this is the phase of the feedback system transfer function. And, uh, higher this overshoot this phase uh, roll off it will be faster uh, or rather rapid. So, uh, based on uh, the uh, again uh, relative position of uh, this P 1 and P 2 uh, this uh, the pole of A f it can be distinct pole or it can be uh, the two poles can be distinct uh, real poles or uh, they can be complex conjugate pair. Now, uh, if I try to compare the location of poles for these two cases, 
case uh, 2a and case 2b, uh, you can uh, probably try to correlate uh, the location of poles, uh, particularly for uh, the forward amplifier poles location and then uh, probably um, uh, the pole location of the feedback system. So, in the next slide, we are going to compare the location of poles. So, we like to compare location of poles for these two cases. So, uh, let me uh, try to see here uh, this A is the forward amplifier circuit, it is having two poles P1 and P2. So, it is let me consider this case first. So, this is the A plane, this is sigma and this is j omega and both P 1 and P 2 they are uh, representing left up plane uh, poles. So, this is a P 1 and this is a uh, P 2 it is quite far apart. So, let you consider P 2 it is quite far apart. Now, if I consider the corresponding A f uh, assuming that these two poles are really wide apart and uh, if I try to see their location of uh, poles particularly P 1 dash and P 2 dash. So, P 1 dash what we are expecting here it is it got shifted to a higher frequency P 1 dash and uh, P 2 dash on the other hand it is almost remaining to this place. Okay. So, the blue color indicates the location of the pole of uh, A and red color uh, indicates the location of the pole of A f. Now, uh, and this is the situation for uh, case uh, uh, 2 A. Now, let us consider case 2 B. So, we do have situation for case 2 B and um, here again this is the real part of the S and this is the imaginary part of S and uh, in this case what we say it is um, P 1 it is a let me again use the blue color for uh, A s. So, we do have P 1 here, but then P 2 it is uh, quite close. So, we do have P 2 here. In this case what we are expecting is that this P 1 dash it may be in the near vicinity. So, this is P 1 dash and since it is very close to this P 2 it will interfere with that and um, P 2 will also be um, changing and the corresponding P 2 it will be coming in the near vicinity. And um, if I further try to push this pole, this pole closer. So, then what we are expecting is that this P 1 dash and P 2 dash they will collide and then they will create complex conjugate pole pair. So, we can say that this is maybe P 1 dash it is having minus sign here. Okay. So, I am considering this is say P 1 dash and this is P 2 dash. So, um, uh, if we take this P 1 and P 2 closer and closer, then bifurcation of uh, this complex conjugate pole pair it will be more. Note that uh, P 1 and P 2 um, uh, the, the real part it is half of P 2 right, half of P 2 while, while they are uh, getting bifurcated as uh, complex pole the real part it is half of P 2. So, if I take this uh, second pole uh, closer towards uh, P 1 
Now, then real part it is also getting changed and the imaginary part on the other hand it is uh, overshooting. So, uh, however, of course, uh, both P 1 dashed and P 2 dashed both are remaining on the left of plane. As a result, uh, these two poles uh, since they are remaining on the left of plane, the system A f or the feedback system remains stable. But then since these poles are complex conjugate pole, they will be having very strange behavior in step response. So, that part we will be talking later, but this is just to tell you that yes, um, uh, the position of P 1 and P 2, the relative position of P 1 and P 2, they are very important for a well behaved uh, feedback system. And in fact, we prefer this condition rather than this condition. Okay. Uh, now, uh, suppose we do have a case where uh, A is having only one pole and suppose the feedback network beta is having another pole and then what it may happen. So, in the next slide we are going to uh, discuss this situation. Uh, here what we have it is uh, uh, of course, again we are considering it is negative feedback system in DC condition and then we are considering beta is having one pole called uh, P B and forward amplifier it is having a pole called P A. So, the uh, beta and uh, uh, forward amplifier um, uh, gain or transfer function both are having one one pole each. So, if I consider of course, the loop gain uh, then this part beta into A uh, it is uh, having both these poles appearing. right? But then if I consider uh, A f the feedback system of course, it will be having two poles that is what we are uh, anticipating, but also it will be having a 0. In fact, um, uh, if you uh, if you write this um, here, uh, the expression of A uh, in the in in the expression of A f. So, what we do have in the numerator it is A naught divided by 1 plus S divided by P A and in the denominator we do have 1 plus beta which is beta naught uh, divided by 1 plus S by P B into A naught divided by 1 plus S divided by P A. Right? So, here we do have only one factor 1 plus S divided by P A in the uh, numerator part, but then in the denominator we do have these two parts. So, if I take these two here, uh, we will be getting almost the similar situation as we have obtained before, but this factor, this factor it is remaining, uh, it is remaining there. As a result, uh, what we can get this A f, uh, the constant part it is of course, A naught divided by 1 plus beta naught into A naught and uh, in the denominator we do have the second order polynomial. In addition to that, we do have one factor in the numerator that represents a 0. So, um, these two depending on of course, the location of P A and P B what we have discussed uh, for case 2 A and 2 B, uh, they may create uh, real poles or may be complex conjugate poles. In addition to that, we do have a, uh, we do have a 0 here. So, I can say that A f it is having frequency independent part, it is having this factor representing uh, a 0 at P B and then uh, it is having two poles called P 1 dashed and P 2 dashed and P 1 dashed and P 2 dashed it is as I said that um, it is it can be obtained by the same uh, method what we uh, uh, got for case 2 A and 2 B. So, I am not going to repeat that. So, that part you can uh, see here. Now, if I consider the Bode plot of A f and A, 
uh, and also the beta, you will be finding very uh, uh, some similarities are there, but of course, it is having some uh, differences also compared to the previous case. So, let me try to uh, sketch that uh, for you. you know what it may be the situation for um, uh, uh, a situation where in case if this pole, this pole it is dominant pole over uh, this P A. So, in the next slide, let me uh, try to sketch that. Yeah. So, here I do assume, here I do assume that P B it is uh, much smaller than P A. And under this condition, if I try to sketch the Bode plot of say A, uh, since A it is A has uh, only one pole, since A has only one pole, so um, it is having say A naught gain and um, uh, then it is having pole P A, but because of this condition, we are assuming that P A it is quite far and then we do have a this pole P A. So, this is P A. On the other hand, if I consider beta, beta is having um, uh, a low frequency gain of beta naught. like this and then it is having a pole called P B. So, it is having a, so this is beta, this is P B. So, if I combine these two to get the loop gain, what we can get here it is um, loop gain, uh, it is having a this pole P B and then after that it is continuing and then it is hitting this P A, sorry this, this is having stiffer slope here. So, uh, this is the loop gain. And now, if I try to plot say A f, uh, you will be finding very interesting information that A f uh, it is approximately uh, if I consider uh, in the low frequency regime, it is approximately 1 by beta naught. So, it is continuing here and then it is having a 0 here. So, because of this 0, it will increase. So, this is A f and then it is having a pole and then it is having the, the next pole. So, we can say that this pole it is um, P 1 dash and that is equal to P B multiplied by 1 plus beta naught into A naught and then it is having a 0 here which is equal to P B and then of course, it is having the, the other pole P 2 dash which is we can say that it is well approximated by this P A. So, for A f, what I said is that low frequency gain here it is approximately 1 by beta naught, then it is having a 0 here and then it is having a pole and then it will have another pole and so and so. And of course, beyond this point, beyond this point it is um, in fact, uh, okay, so in the sketch I do have, uh, it is not very neat. Uh, in fact, this point and this point supposed to be almost close to each other. In fact, 
we should have gone like this and then like this. But anyway, uh, so what I like to say that uh, this A f it is having a additional 0. So, depending on the location of the pole of the feedback network, it may be having uh, in the situation like this. And uh, as uh, this P 1 dashed and its expression is given here, if it is approaching to uh, this P 2 dashed or P a, then they these two poles may get combined and it may create the complex conjugate uh, pole P a probably you can try to uh, sketch the location of the poles for uh, different cases, uh, particularly when you consider uh, both A and beta they do have uh, the pole and um, if they are approaching each other what may be the situation, what may be the location of the, uh, of the 0 poles of this one you can try uh, yourself and uh, convince yourself that yes a f it is having 1 0 and 2 poles. Now, this is the case when uh, we do have loop gain it is having 2 poles. It may have a situation where loop gain may have 3 poles or even more than that. So, uh, suppose if I consider the next case, case 4 where a is having 3 poles, beta may not be having a pole. Okay. So, in the next slide we do have this situation uh, where uh, this A is having uh, A is having 3 poles and if I consider um, P 1 it is dominant pole, not only it is dominant pole, uh, even after if I consider it is getting shifted by a factor of 1 plus beta into A naught. Uh, even in this case, if I assume that uh, this is less than P 2 and P 3, then what we can say that if we can, uh, we can uh, extrapolate our previous analysis that if it is having low frequency gain defined by uh, this equation. Uh, a naught divided by 1 plus beta into A naught and then it is having uh, 3 poles namely P 1 dashed, P 2 dashed and P 3 dashed. P 1 dashed it is shifted version of P 1 by a factor of 1 plus beta into A naught. P 2 dashed on the other hand uh, yeah. So, P 2 dashed and P 3 dashed they are uh, approximately remaining uh, to the same position of P 2 and P 3 only P 1 dash it is getting shifted by this factor. Okay. So, that is how we can um, uh, you can uh, analyze a circuit. In fact, um, uh, if you consider uh, it is Bode plot probably you yourself can uh, find what will happen. Uh, and uh, of course, if this condition it is uh, getting violated namely if these two are uh, becoming comparable then uh, these two may be getting mixed up and uh, as a result uh, then P 1 and P 1 dash and P 2 dash they may be appearing as complex conjugate pole. And then also we do have the third pole if the third pole it is also coming into picture then of course, then we will be having still two complex conjugate um, pole pair and one real pole and uh, then uh, all the three poles will be having uh, the contribution to define the location of the, uh, uh, of the uh, poles of the A f. So, if I try to plot uh, the uh, gain for A f and A for this condition uh, probably you yourself can find out, but uh, let me uh, help you to uh, elaborate on that. Okay. So, if I uh, try to make a sketch of it namely if I try to make the uh, gain and particularly gain plot let me uh, restrict the discussion here. We um, will be covering the phase plot later. So, what we said is that if I consider this is the condition namely P 1 it is dominating 
and then P 2 it is there, but P 2 it is really far, um, then maybe P 3 also, right. So, we do have P 3 here, you do have P 2 here. and then we do have P 1 here. So, this is the plot of A and uh, this is low frequency gain on this A and we consider beta it is independent of uh, uh, independent of uh, frequency, uh, but then it is less than 1. So, the corresponding beta uh, into A if I plot or rather if I plot the loop gain. So, this is the loop gain and uh, it is having the first pole and then it is having the, the second pole and then third pole. And, uh, and then if I plot the, uh, uh, the feedback system transfer function namely A f. So, what we are expecting here it is it is having low frequency gain which is A naught divided by 1 plus beta into A naught and it is continuing till it is uh, hitting A and this is the point where it is hitting A and beyond this point it, will, it is following A. So, we can say that it creates a pole here which is P 1 dash, this is P 1, this is P 1 dash which is equal to P 1 multiplied by 1 plus beta into A naught. And then of course, the corresponding pole here and here they are remaining same. So, we can say that P 2 dash and uh, here we do have P 3 dash. Um, one important point you uh, we have simply missed it. Uh, if you see this corner point and the frequency at which the loop gain it is becoming uh, crossing 0 dB level. So, this is 0 dB level. They do have a, a good uh, you know, uh, coincidence, they are very close to each other, which indicates that um, uh, if I consider A f, which is A divided by 1 plus beta into A. Uh, in fact, if you see here in the low frequency. Uh, situation where this part it is dominating. So, in low frequency we can approximate this by 1 by beta, but if you go to higher frequency particularly beyond this frequency where this part it is uh, less than 1 beyond that frequency, then um, this is uh, this A f need to be approximated by A. So, this frequency which is the unity gain frequency of loop gain, it is very vital point. So, later uh, we will say that this A f, uh, it is it is B or rather we can make a uh, we can make uh, two segments of A f over the frequency range below this unity gain frequency and beyond that. So, below the unity gain frequency the, the feedback system gain it is 1 by beta. On the other hand, um, if it is beyond this unity gain frequency A f is equal to uh, approximately A for omega more than unity gain frequency and this is for omega less than unity gain frequency. In fact, importance of this unity gain frequency it will be discussed later in our um, in our stability analysis uh, system probably that will be discussed in the next week. Uh, so, um, 
let me wind up whatever the discussion we do have uh, today primarily um, change of frequency response of the amplifier due to feedback uh, uh, connection. So, um, it is what we have discussed uh, in today's class uh, in two half. Uh, we have discussed about the uh, location of poles of a feedback system and uh, it is uh, their dependencies uh, on uh, the location of pole of the forward amplifier and also the location of the pole of the feedback network. And what we have done is that uh, we have considered uh, four cases in fact, uh, where the loop gain it is having uh, only one pole, uh, then loop gain it is having two poles it is having three possible deviation uh, where A is having two poles and, um, and then um, uh, A is having one pole and beta is having one pole. Okay. And then uh, we, we have considered a situation where A is having three poles. Okay. So, this gives you fair idea that how the um, poles locations are getting uh, changed and what we have seen is that the dominant pole P 1 it is getting shifted dominant pole of uh, the loop gain it is getting shifted to P 1 um, in the form of P 1 dash which is P 1 multiplied by 1 plus beta into A and relative position of this P 1 dash and the second pole and third pole they are creating a situation whether uh, the, the shifted version uh, poles are having clear real value or are they complex conjugate. I think that is all in the next class we will be talking about some numerical examples. Thank you.